What's up, what's up everybody? Are you ready for an RTA video so epic? So epic of a video, it's gonna leave your underpants jingling. Jingle, jingle, like a, like a money sandwich. Like a money, s it, 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 it's a video, it's an RTA video. Okay, we're gonna go see some RTA matches. Okay, money sandwich. Let's get it started, money sandwich. All right, first battle, what do we have going on? We have uh, Korean versus Korean, G3 versus G3, and Dark Succubus, I thought this was interesting. Dark Succubus, so they have the, the counter basically to a jeer and chilling is the Diana, so that's why the Diana was bad. But that Vertiheal, leaving the Vertiheal uh, in there. They went for the, I think her name is Asail, right? Asail, so they're trying to take her out because she's the strip and the potentially defense break. They don't have a defense break aside from her. She's got the Purify, the Vampire Bat, bing bing, bing bung bing, lots of uh, turn cycling. So going after Vanessa first, there's no heal aside from the, there we go, the second skill onto Ajir. So the second skill strips, glancing, defense break, and uh, stun. It exchanges all those buffs with the, the uh, like, it, up to three buffs with those debuffs. Which is really cool, but if you don't have three buffs, uh, it's kind of... You're, like if you have one buff and you're like, oh, I hope this gets and sometimes it gets resisted and if it doesn't get resisted Sometimes it's just like Okay, you got the you got a glancing Congratulations you stripped one buff and put a glancing Fantastic, but we see a sale actually working, but she did basically as good as she's ever gonna do on that a sheer uh, Not a sheer a jeer <laughs> A sheer in RTA a sheer uh, has great base speed actually for RTA the I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm talking about the um, the light werewolf this year, but see like there he only did she only did a glancing hit. That's a perfect example of what I was trying to explain before. That like some people use her and she can be a an interesting because she's her first skill is good. Her first skill is good sleep, uh, but the more buffs they have, the more you get the value out of that second skill. And you didn't see them use the third skill at all here because it's really, the value is mostly in that second skill, which is a really, really good second skill. But if she had a better third skill, because the third skill, she's very, very similar to the fire one. If you guys f are feeling froggy, you could think about the, the fire one as well, kind of like her. Um, it's just her third skill does damage, the different leader skills, and the third skill does damage based on enemy max HP for the Dark Succubus. Which is good against, of course, like boss monsters and stuff like that, but... Um, but yeah, her second skill is really interesting. If she had a more RTA relevant third skill, you would see her a lot, actually. Also, I'm trying to explain very seriously, and I'm wearing... Eskimo clothes. <laughs> What do we have next? See, Vanessa first pick. Rocky. Rocky. Oh, Rocky for the Perna. The Perna. So the Perna Ganymede is staying in. They're not. Yeah, we knew they weren't going to ban the Perna Ganymede because that's why they picked Rocky in the first place. You could tell that they weren't going to ban that um, based on those picks. Okay. So now they're going to uh, start an end. No. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, for the extra buffs. That's why they did it. For the extra buffs. There you go. So now she's got to go for Odin. But Odin's still going to, uh, I mean, how much turn cycling is she going to do? <laughs> and that answers that question. He's still going to revive himself, though, is the thing. With full HP. Damn, feels bad. <laughs> Feel bad for that, uh, that Odin. But Rocky, doing what ro Rocky's supposed to do. Okay, so glancing hit on uh, Odin. But Odin was on cooldown anyway. So Odin's still not dead though, but defense, well, now, now he's dead. GG on that, but the Rocky actually can do really well right now. Can, can he get the stun on the Diana? Does not get the stun on the Diana. But he's gotta go for the Rocky next. Because the Rocky could take out the Diana and the Ganymede. Not even really an issue. Okay, cools down. I wasn't paying attention to the, the skill cooldowns on the Lima. But really, as soon as... This this Rocky can kind of, uh, kind of still wreck face, though. I want to see this come back. I want to see this come back. I want to see the Rocky come back! Boom, boom. 
Very nice, very nice, very nice. Rocky win. Oh, Rocky got stunned, man. Oh, no. Oh, no. Poor Rocky. She did what she was supposed to do there. She did what she was supposed to do. She she took she was uh she was working well against the uh the Diana Ganymede and she was also took out that uh Perna without reviving without the Perna Ganymede uh re reviving the Perna again. This is why I want to devil mom my Rocky and I'm really considering doing that cuz I have a couple but there's a few different options that she's one of the three options that I want to go for. All right, let's see what we got here. We have we have the Draco. We have a Tiana and a Wusa. Like, when you have the Tiana and the Wusa, you kind of ban something else, and you let their picks kind of go against against them. Tiana, Wusa. Also remember, Fey, uh second skill strips. I think a lot of non fey owners don't realize that. But it's kind of RNG as well. Oh, bye-bye, Tiana. <laughs> uh, GG. Um, but that light vampire still has a double hit, so it could still kill Garrow, but goes for the second skill. Was that the, that was the second skill, right? Because both are double hits now. Goes for the second skill first. But would it be more effective to go for... Didn't even bother going... See, I like to go for the Julienne first because I feel like the Julienne takes damage more easily. Sucks it up from other sources, but still takes it more easily because uh, it's usually runes... Uh, well, it's always runes squishier than the other stuff. So no one's ruling, uh, ruining Julienne with like triple HP or anything. Then you see a Julianne burned with triple HP, and you're like, no, what the hell's going on, man? So as soon as they take out the, um, they, they keep stunning. Uh, they gotta keep stunning, glancing hit, attack power break on the, uh, on the Julianne. Uh, if they could somehow manage to get a Garrow Dot on, well, they could just go for the, yeah, I was gonna say they could just go for that, and then GG. Draco! You don't see Draco picked a lot, but I think, I feel like maybe Draco's been picked more this season and I just haven't been no noticing. I've been, it's been like, oh, I look away and then like, Draco, 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 Draco matches over here. And I'm like, oh, I didn't see those. But uh, I feel like Draco's been picked a little bit more this season, actually. Not that he's like super picked all the time, but I feel like he's been picked a little bit more. Remember how I was saying about the Draco being picked more this season? Well, this should be an interesting one. This should be an interesting one. Gianna banned, but still has the the, the shotgun boomerang combo. Still has the really fast Draco. And really fast Draco has been been a thing. I kind of want to rerun my Draco. I feel like that's gonna be so fun to uh, to use though. And GG. And yeah, that was fast GG. That reminds. This kind of reminds me of what uh, what Archer was using actually. But he was using, what was the other one he was using? Bastet, not Draco, he's using Bastet instead of Draco, I think. Pretty sure he's using Bastet instead of Draco. But very similar concept. Okay, same guy as the last one, but this is different opponent, G3 opponent, so let's see how they react to it. They react with Odin, and they use the Bastet, because I would guess they were picking the Bastet out from him, assuming that he was gonna pick the Bastet. So gets turn one. Goes for always goes to the Diana first. <laughs> and GJ and another easy win. Okay. Okay, on the left we have the Gany Hathor nonsense combination. And we have double swift uh buff uh units. And they had to they had to ban one of those. And then on the right we have more of a meta team uh of the friend Vertiheel with like constant immunity and they had the water monkey. Uh, all this turn multiplication, turn multiplication over and over and over again. Um, constantly immunity. Uh, so he's going for the strip and he's going to bomb that Perna. Well, unless Perna just deletes the CR before he gets a chance to bomb anything. But there we go. We got the bomb on the Perna. Detonate. And now Gany. Gany already reset the Wusa though. So can Gany cannot reset the Perna right away. Uh, Fran is gonna go. So triple glancing though went for went went for that. I feel I feel like I would have hit the hit the Wusa or the Bastet just to get that extra attack gauge. But he's gonna have the bomb soon. He doesn't. He needs the monkey strip first before the bomb though. 
But the Vertiheal can take out the Perna without uh, without anything. Okay, so Perna, the DPS is gone. The DPS is gone. They're gonna take the Ciara down. But between the Vertiheal Monkey and Fran combo, I feel like they're just gonna win between those three because you still have the... Well, maybe he's not gonna take the Ciara out. Okay, I assumed he was gonna take the Ciara out. But CR is not out, and then they just have all the DPS sources plus enough sustain to survive. The Gani Wusa is not going to be enough to take out this, uh, to, to counter this, this meta team of Water Monkey, Verti Heal, Fran, and that's why it is the meta. Because there's just so much turn cycling, there's a lot of, I mean, they don't, they don't have any immunity anyway. Uh, well, with the Wusa down, but... Uh, but even if they did have the immunity, we'd still have the strip with the water monkey. And then he has just all that CC. CC with the Fran first skill, turn gauge manipulation. Like, new team versus, like, meta this season team versus uh, kind of a team that's not bad. I mean, G3 player, but not uh, not really one of the top uh, the top things anymore, right? He was stronger last season. He was stronger last season is what I was trying to say. Stronger last season. So this one is interesting. Uh, this is the same, I think it's the same, um, yeah, it's the same guy from before, I'm sure. Um, where we saw he was using the Draco. So this one, they use the Samoth and a Perna. Perna and Samoth both uh, revive themselves, but the Samoth is one of the actually best counters to this team because there's, especially these RTA Samoths that are ruined, not necessarily with like even speed, but they're ruined mostly as like tremendous damage dealers. So you take the Samoth out and then Samoth comes back and just nukes the entire team. So all really Samoth, the Perna is just going for the CR and hoping that uh, he's got enough power to nuke the rest of the team when he dies. That's basically the thing that he's trying to do. And how much damage? Yeah, but that was that was the strategy. That's that's basically the strategy of why this guy's rocking it though. This guy's rocking it. But that's basically the strategy of why the Samoth pick. Maybe he had his uh, like Arena Samoth and it was more speed and less DPS, or maybe the uh, the Gianna runes and the CR runes were just too strong uh, as far as like the grinded uh, HP and defense and all the other stats. I think this is Wayne. I think this is Wayne playing on the right. I think this is the I I th I think this might be Wayne on the right. Okay, I'm kind of curious cuz uh I was going to do some uh I think I was going to do a video showing his team. So this is cool that we show it. Uh this this OG does a big 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 damage though. So attack power buff and then super big damage and nukes everything. Well, didn't nuke everything, but almost basically. Like almost just destroyed the entire team. But this is cool, because I wanted to show this team actually before as well. Yeah, I, I wonder if that's them. So it actually was him. I just looked at the community tab and I was like, oh yeah, that's them. I mean, like, who else has this full dark team though? Who else has this full, well, Asians. Um, but aside from that, aside from that, so that, by the way, the dark uh, the dark druid. I don't know if you guys know. He does the that Gianna is the scariest thing though. But the dark druid does the immunity. So it's the defense break, and then she self attack power buffs, and then does all this nuke damage. Self attack power buff, boom, 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 all this damage. Uh, who dies and who? So this Ratu comes back with the attack power buff and full attack gauge. Fantastic. Bye bye Gianna. Okay. These things happen. And bye bye. Because she's. Oh, she was, she actually did survive. Okay. And defense break on to Ragdoll. Nice. But the team's the team's working good. Let's see some more of this team, though. Guys, you want to see 100,000. No. 100,000? More than 100,000? I don't know. You want to see $200,000 worth of visa power in one battle? This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. So bans the Veljul. Bans the Veljul. Uh, because the Veljul, if you resisted... Ah, uh, Celia is so OP. Um, but if the Veljul resisted, then... Well, he can't... He can't... I mean, he's not cleaving this one. But if the Veljul resisted, he could just uh, do the immunity. Any, do the cleanse, right? 
Sometimes I actually do the same thing. I'll ban the villager because I'm like, I don't mind the Wusa strip. I just don't want to strip and then have it all cleansed off and then have the immunity again. Deal with. Oh, Celia so OP. You know what I say? I talk about the visa power and then I'm like, Bagel sitting here with like four net, five net fives himself. I don't even. X amount of net fives himself. We don't need to count. We don't need to count. We don't need to count. So those dots on that, um, those dots on that, uh, that vampire though. That's a great, great, great way to kill this vampire. Because if those dots, uh, if the dots kill him, then his passive does not activate. Ah, wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. Let's see what the visa child is gonna, is gonna do. Or if the visa child just gets, uh, CC'd. Okay, healing music. Oh my god, the visa power! Oh! 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 Visa chill versus Celia. This is too intense, guys. This is too intense. This is so, so... Such an expensive battle. Oh my god. This is such a very expensive Asian battle. Dear lord, dear lord. Celia power. Is that, uh, is that Cracker on? <laughs> I feel bad saying. <laughs> is that, is that Cracker on despair? I don't know if that Cracker's on despair. Okay, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. Um, she is. I didn't see a stun. And not a crazy provokes. And switch destiny. Okay. The power of Celia. The, oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. He's gonna take out that Wusa. But there's only. They're on borrowed time. There's only so much they can do. There's more sustain on that uh, Artemiel side. This is, this is an intense battle, guys. This is an intense battle. But he's going for that, uh, that vampire. So. Oh, GG. Wow. Oh, it was so close. There's so many different ma that points in that match. That was that was too intense. The power of that light dark nat fives. And the thing is, one of the beautiful things about the light dark nat fives is even if they're not as strong as some of their um, their regular element counterparts, I feel silly saying like serious stuff in this in this outfit. But even if some of them might not be as strong, like if you really like if you're prepared for them. If someone just pulls it out of nowhere on you, you're like, oh, wasn't expecting that. You don't have maybe some of the counters. I mean, in G3, you do have the counters for it because you prepared for them. Um, but at many other levels, you don't, you just don't have the, so you, you're automatically at a disadvantage because you're like, man, I should have built this, which would have been a great counter that, but I do not have that built. So, how are the visa, man? What's Visa? Sorry, the the power of the black card. All right, let's see how it does against a meta team of half. This is just so meta. This team, Fran Vertigo. So takes out the sustain. Still has the strip. Still has the CC. Still has the turn cycling. But he banned out the Fran, which is the. I like how the Fran, the three star, is the one that gets banned out because clearly the three star is too strong. got that he's going to I mean he's gonna disturb HP recovery but it's not gonna be anything super crazy he doesn't have that defense break there and now just get CC'd and now remember when everyone was like oh water monkey rip water monkey is so terrible water monkey unsummon water monkey feed to f feed feed to wind monkey feed to fire monkey where's the wind monkey now water monkey just just don't even don't even build it sit keep it in storage no, people were feeding the water monkey. People were feeding the water monkey, and now it's like, oh, water monkey's everywhere. I didn't know it was gonna get buffed. Been over this for the past four years. Don't feed net fives. <laughs> you don't know what's gonna get buffed. So, uh, Nemesis on there. What's the rune build? Is that Rage Nemesis or something? I don't know. I don't know what the rune build is on that. Why Nemesis though? Like, I see the Nemesis proccing, but I'm just like, why Nemesis? Counter! No counter. 
But it's nice to see Vertiheal versus Ragdoll as well. And gets the guaranteed stun. And GG. Damn! That's why it's a meta team. <laughs> That's why it's a meta team. Okay, really. I get the second team. But what the fuck is this first team? Deafness Rocky! YOLO! Okay, <laughs> Deafness Rocky. You know he's just gonna go, he's just gonna first turn. He's gonna third skill on Perna. No, he's gonna third skill on uh, Okinos. And then he goes for Diana. Boom, boom. And then he's gonna go for the uh, Soul Crush. Oh, he goes for Soul Crush on Perna! See, I thought he was gonna use the third skill on Perna with the Daphnis, and then go for the Soul Crusher on Daphnis. But he went for the... the Okinos halfway, and then he was like, you know what, I got enough to take care of this Perna. I gotta build this Rocky, man. People poo-poo on Rocky, but Rocky's useful. Just not, not always useful, but she's useful in, uh, in some situations. In some situations, she's great. So let's see if Helena does Helena. There's double ponies, anything can happen. Double Pony Madness. Bye bye, Helena. Not really, though. Well, is that better? I, I think that's better that uh, Helena didn't go into uh, pony form. I mean, human form. Because now she's got more survivability. Because she would have died from that before. Never mind, she gonna die now. Is that what kept her alive, is staying in human form? If that's what kept her alive, this is this is fantastic. And then she goes into human form and she wrecks everyone. Oh my god. So the resetting Helena is what lost the match, actually. Oh my god. Reset Helena and then Helena was survived. The boy who's- Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. The boy who lived. Helena, well, Helena's not a boy. Well, I, I don't know. I, I shouldn't assume pony gender. Unicorn gender. But yeah, the, the resetting Helena saved her life. See, Helena, it was good for you. Was, they were just trying to look out for your best interests. That's a, that's a close one, man. Okay, I gotta see this. So this is G3, and they are Lucianing. In G3. Kind of figured that stopped working after like C2, <laughs> but okay. Uh, no attack power buff. Gets the reset. Gets the bomb. Resi that resist could have cost them. That resist could be the uh, the game changing uh, the game changing game changer right there. Boom boom. You, you know that game-changing game-changer, guys. Hold on. But is it really a game-changing game-changer? Or is it not a game-changing game-changer? Serious, this is not- Yeah, I, this is why I figured this- This Lucian- This Lucian Zara thing wasn't gonna work in G3. I just- I mean, some people can get away with it to a point. I know Saiwa's doing it uh, a lot. Saiwa's going crazy with those cleaves uh, a few seasons back, but he doesn't do... I think he stopped, like, a, like a, a four seasons ago, like a year ago or something like that with the cleaves. So, I don't know, nine months ago? He, he stopped a while ago with the cleaves. He's like, yeah, it's not... It's, it's just not as reliable. And he's like, I want to be super up there. All right, let's finish it off with one more, one more light dark cleave match against double lightning emperors. The RNG was strong with them. Okay, but they have the they have well they have a couple combos actually. They have a couple uh, one two combos. They have the combo of uh, Mo Long Lightning Emperor. They have combo of um, one Lightning Emperor, two Lightning Emperors. They have the combo of Mo Long and the other Lightning Emperor. So. <laughs> the cleave is also strong, but those lightning embers are both double stacked. This water lightning ember is going to come up and heal right now. Not going to kill though, but it's going to be one poop away from uh, killing. One poop. That's the actual method of, uh, that's the measurement. The unit of measurement. Yeah. Damn. 
That's that's a that's a nice combo. Ignore defense, ignore defense, ignore ignore defense and tankiness, right? Because everything here is tanky. Uh, Molong is tanky. Uh, Odin revives himself, uh, and Falafel revives himself to what is his name? Geldnir. Geldnir. Is that the one? The water one. Water lightning emperor. You know which one I mean. He's tanky too. Everyone's tanky. All right, guys. That's it for this episode of Epic Battles of Arte. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed all the crazy shenanigans gameplay of all these units that cost a bajillion dollars to summon and then another bajillion dollars to ruin. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's it for this one. I will see you always in the next one.